This video presents our work on non-rigid structure for motion with complementary rank 3 spaces. This work is part of ongoing research within the Computational Biology and Cognitive Science Laboratory in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at The Ohio State University. Non-rigid structure for motion is a challenging problem in computer vision with important applications found in computer graphics, human-computer interaction, and biometrics. Given corresponding 2D points in multiple images of a non-rigid object, the goal is to recover the object's 3D shape and pose in each image. This is a very difficult problem with a large number of unknowns. To make this reconstruction task more tractable, recent research has attempted to define new constraints on the deformation of general 3D shapes. In this presentation, we first review the standard matrix factorization approach to non-rigid structure for motion. Then, to reduce the number of unknowns that need to be estimated, we introduce a compact model of shape deformation based on the discrete cosine transform. Finally, we propose a new factorization algorithm with complementary rank 3 spaces that defines new constraints on shape deformation. Here, we do not address the problem of tracking points over images. We assume that this task has been accomplished as a preliminary step. We assume that tracked points are given in the observation matrix W. Each pair of rows in W has the coordinates of all object points as seen in a single image. A column of W has the coordinates of a single object point as seen in all images. Here, the number of images is denoted by T and the number of object points by N. Let's review the standard matrix factorization approach. Remember, for each image the goal is to recover the object's 3D shape and pose, as to explain the observations in W. The standard approach represents each 3D shape as a linear combination of a small number k of basis shapes. The basis shapes are the axes of a linear space where each object shape is represented as a point with coordinates given by the coefficient c. Using this representation, we obtain the standard factorization model. W is represented as a product of two matrix factors, M and S, with a low rank 3K, where K is the number of basis shapes. To derive a more compact model of shape deformation with fewer unknowns, we begin with a standard model and then we consider the common scenario where the 3D object deforms only gradually from one image to the next. Each object shape is still represented as a point in the linear shape space. As the object deforms, its point representation describes a smooth time trajectory in this space. The smooth shape trajectory is represented by the coefficients in matrix C. To define a more compact model with fewer unknowns, we represent matrix C in terms of the DCT basis vectors. With gradual shape deformation, a very small number of low-frequency DCT vectors is usually enough to model the smooth shape trajectory. As a result, the number of unknowns in our model is greatly reduced. To estimate the parameters in our model, we use the following matrix factorization method. First, we consider factor S as an implicit function of M and W. For example, the least squares estimate of S defined in terms of W and the pseudo-inverse of M. Therefore, the solution we seek is defined in terms of factor M alone. In the second step, we compute factor M as to minimize the reprojection error, as shown here. This is done using a Gauss-Newton optimization algorithm. Now let's consider two alternative ways of representing S as a function of M and W. The first method uses the least squares estimate of each column of S, which is defined in terms of the corresponding column of W in the pseudo-inverse of M. Because factor S represents the basis shapes, each column of S gives the deformation basis of a single object point. This deformation basis has 3k degrees of freedom, where k is the number of basis shapes. Therefore, all object points are modeled with the same number of degrees of freedom. A problem with this representation is that in practice, different parts of the object often present deformations of different complexities. This fact is illustrated in the following. 
The video on the left shows the motion capture data of a walking person. On the right, the image shows trajectories of points on the person's body. Note that some body parts present complex deformations. Other parts present relatively simple deformations. And some parts remain nearly rigid. The conclusion is that with this representation of S, some points are modeled with too many degrees of freedom. They can introduce spurious deformations in the recovered shapes. For instance, when the extra degrees of freedom fit noise in W. To address this problem, we introduce a second representation of S, which we call complementary rank 3 spaces. First, we consider column triplets of M. Then, we can express W as a sum of products of a triplet and the corresponding basis shape. We can now define each basis shape as an implicit function of its corresponding column triplet and the residual component of W not yet modeled by the previous triplets. This representation can be shown to reduce the energy of each column of the basis shape as the index K increases. As in principal component analysis, the resulting basis shapes give a sequence of modes of deformation with decreasing energy as illustrated by the image on the right. To evaluate our methods, we first use motion capture data and artificial 3D datasets. The original 3D shapes were projected to 2D to produce an observation matrix W. Then, a non-rigid structure for motion algorithm was applied, and the recovered 3D shapes were compared to the original shapes. The results of the two methods were compared to those of three state-of-the-art non-rigid structure for motion algorithms. Considering all 10 data sets used in the evaluation, the results of our two methods are in general better than those obtained with the other three algorithms. This video presents a visual comparison of the results provided by our two methods on the challenging walking person data set. The reconstructed shapes are displayed in three orthogonal views and in overlay with the ground truth. The top row shows the results of our first method. The bottom row shows the results of our second method with complementary rank 3 spaces. Notice the better reconstruction of the motion of the legs without sacrificing accuracy and reconstructing the other body parts with relatively simple deformations. We now consider a face close-up video sequence of a sentence in American Sign Language. 75 facial points were manually marked over 114 images, but only when visible. Due to natural occlusion, 11.5% of the points are missing. The reconstructed 3D shapes are shown in three views. Finally, the recovered 3D shapes are shown in two views with the texture of a non-occluded frontal face. Please refer to our websites for more information about our research, including publications, source code, and demo files of our algorithms. Thank you.